Hello everyone, I'm D-Mind, the mind of one and all, and welcome back to another episode of An Octave Higher. So in the last episode, Frederick asked Ellis to service him, and I'm not so sure if he meant as a prostitute, and I hope not. That's really blunt. And she's not even old enough. I've stopped playing the piano. You heard me. I want you to service me. What is he saying? Fadrick, come on. That's not how you hit on girls. Shelf you? How do you want me to shelf you? You know what I mean. Service me like you service your customers every night. Fadrick. Fadrick, darling. Oh no. <laughs> I'm rooting for you, but that's not how. Even if... I know you misunderstood. You thought, alright, she's that. But even if you misunderstood, that's not how. And even then, you want... It's, their service is just like they don't have an intimate relationship. What, don't you want an intimate relationship or you just want the, to use just literally just banger? Um, did she? Did I not read her last text? Uh, no, I did. And that's Frederick's text. I feel cold sweat on my on the back of my neck. I I don't know what you're talking about. You know exactly what I'm talking about. I know you worked at Mason Day before. I know what you are. I step back while shaking my head, but Frederick comes nearer. You're wrong, I don't work at Mason, I only... I'll pay you, it's not a question of money. How much do you normally pay? Do they normally pay? I'll double that. No, I told you, you are wrong. I live at Mason, but I don't work there, I don't take customers. Frederick keeps advancing, I'm back to wall. Frederick! Oh, don't do this, man! No, I'm not that kind of girl, get away from me! He hops his steps. What happened? Mm. Franz looked at me questioningly. At least, is something wrong? I don't know what to say. I don't want Franz to find out about me living at Mason. He won't let me be part of a research project if he thinks I'm a... I'm a... I feel my face burning. My eyes are starting to sting with hot tears. At least? I ran past Franz and exit through the open door. At least? I don't stop. I need to get out of here. Frederick, Frederick, that's not how. No, oh, I thought you was gonna go. Oh, Frederick, Frederick, Frederick. Outside the house, I just walk around randomly. I don't know this area at all. It's like a foreign land to me. I stop myself from crying. I refuse to shed a tear over this little thing. Why could I just explain the situation to them? Frank was there. He would have listened. But there's no point. Frederick wasn't wrong. He was technically wrong, but in three months he'll be right. In fact, I somewhat regret rejecting his offer. If I'm going to haul myself out in three months away, anyway, I might as well start now. Frederick is at least handsome. Some of them men who show up at Mason. I don't want to think about it. It's only adding to my sense of shame. I'm disgusted at myself. I'm making... It's making me even more frustrated. I'm angry. I'm angry at Frederick. Oh. I'm angry at Franz for taking me to him. But I'm also angry at myself. I curse my fate that such a thing existed. Where am I? Where am I going? There are aristocrats all around me that I could ask for directions, but most of them try to avoid eye contact. Some though are outright staring at me like I'm some kind of exotic animal. I've been walking for almost half an hour, but I haven't seen a single omnibus stop. This must be why Franz took me here in a taxi carriage. There's no shortage of taxi carriages here, but I can afford I can't afford one. And even if I could, it's unlikely the driver would let me in. Finally I reach I reach a main city street. I'm still completely lost though. I've never been in this part of the city. I continue to wander without knowing where I'm going. Dots. I see a policeman. Maybe he can tell me where I can find an omnibus stop. Is this the same policeman or do all policemen just look the same? <laughs> And please don't, don't treat her badly just because she's a poor. Um, excuse me. The policeman glances at me for a second, but doesn't say anything. Can you tell me where I can find an only bus stop? He ignores me. Oh, come on. Um, hello? Do you know where the nearest only bus stop is? Will you tell me, please? Finally, without even looking at me, he uses his thumb to point to his right. It doesn't look like he's going to tell me anything more. Thanks. 
I walk in the direction he pointed, but his direction isn't helpful at all. I still don't know where the omnibus stop is. He wouldn't answer me properly because I'm a proletarian. He can tell by the way I'm dressed. When they say their job is to serve and protect, they are talking about protecting the Bogoisi and the aristocrats. They can't be bothered with people like me. I still haven't found an omnibus stop, despite having walked for what seems like miles. There have been a number of intersections here since I left the policeman. He was lying to me for all I know. But what would I even do if I did find an omnibus stop? Go home to Maison de Beauvoir so I can prepare to become a whore in 3 months? I can't go home. I have no home. Maison de Beauvoir is not my home. I don't want to go back there. I don't have anywhere to go. I continue dragging my feet, not even caring where they take me. I glance up at the sound above. Although I don't have a chronometer, I can tell it that it's already past noon. My stomach growls. I skipped breakfast this morning. There was no time to eat lunch before I stormed out of the Lord's mission, mansion. I stop when I come across a small bistro. Perhaps I can, buy, I can buy a slice of bread for lunch. A quick look at the menu written on chalkboard outside the bistro makes it the, the idea I move along. In this part of town, I don't even have money, enough money for a cup of tea. Wow, and Franz and Frederick just let her go, huh? Franz had promised to pay me as compensation for not working today, but I left without before receiving any money. In other words, I just lost a day's wage for nothing. My legs are getting weak. They are trembling. I don't know how many miles I've walked. Ah! Surely I'm, my right foot strips on a stone, causing me to fall headlong to the brick pavement. Ouch. Trying to get back up. I see that I've scraped my left knee, it's bleeding and the pain stings. Still on the ground, I touch my scraped knee and my hand and start focusing on compassion. Transform. Nothing happens, the scrape is still there, it's still bleeding and I'm still hurting. I don't have enough mana for this. I even forgot to ask Franz for a ball this morning. You know, maybe your healing magic just doesn't work on- No, it does, it does work on people. You did use it that one time, yeah. If I haven't run- from Frederick's house, Franz wouldn't have would have given me a man, given me a mana potion, so that I could demonstrate my magic. I didn't take any of this true, did I? I look around the passers by, pretend to have not seen me. They go about their business as if there wasn't a girl hungry down on the pavement with a bleeding knee. A couple of teenagers, a boy and a girl, walk by. They notice the boy notices and points at me while saying something to the girl. As she's about to walk over to me, the girl grabs the boy's hand and shakes her head at him. The boy throws me another glance before leaving with the girl. What should I do? What can I do? I obviously can't go to a hospital because I don't have the money. It seems my only option is to ignore it, stand up and keep walking. It's great, we need it really isn't that big a deal. Just when I'm about to get up, I feel compassion from birth. Transform Compassion The script disappears from my knee. The pain is completely gone. I look up to find a tall man standing behind me. Oh, uh, let me guess. You're part of the Libertad, and at least he's gonna join the Libertad. She's not going back to the mansion, she's gonna join the Libertad, and oh, she's gonna end up fighting Frederick. Frederick, no! Frederick, why you have to do this, man? Seriously. Does your knee still hurt? The man is not only tall, but also big. Not round, big like some lords who freaking make, make him, but strong big. He looks like a superhero from children's picture books. His skin is darker than most people in Overture, though not black dark like the space they bring from far south, far south. His face is showing some age, but it's still very much full of life. I see he's in his thirties. No, it's completely healed now. Thank you very much, sir. I'm hope I'm sorry you had to waste your man on me. Oh, don't worry about it. Do you have any other injuries that need healing? No, I'm perfectly healthy now. I haven't even e finished speaking when my stomach growls loudly. Bad stomach, bad! Ah! Ha ha ha! Ha ha ha! Excuse me, I need to run away. It's what I do when I get impressed, apparently. Wait, wait, don't go, young lady. I suppose your stomach problem isn't something that I can treat with magic, but why don't you come with me? There is this place where they serve really great food. No, no, you've done enough for me, thank you. I can't make this stranger buy me a meal on top of healing my injury. Oh, don't worry, young lady, this place is cheap, so it's not going to make you broke. We'll split the bill, is that okay for you? 
Uh, I probably wouldn't be able to afford my half, actually. Of course you will. You're a factory worker, aren't you? Factory workers go to eat there all the time. I glanced down at my factory uniform for a second before looking up again. Okay, I'll go with you. Do you bring any money, though? My mouth is watching already. That The man holds out this, his arm for me. Alright, shall we go, young lady? Elise. It's not young lady, it's Elise. Ah, ah, ah. ah my apologies, I'm... Jisang Alish. Let me try to get this young one go. I am Jisang Alish Jabana. Alish Jabana. I am Jisang. Jisang? Jisang? Nah, Jisang. I'm Jisang Alish Jabana. Pleased to make your acquaintance, Lady Alish. Jisang? It's your foreign name. Yes, Jisang. Okay, nice to meet you, Jisang. Shall we? Yeah. That look on his eyes looks... I know. <laughs> I know the eyes in this, some of the eyes in this game looks weird. Once upon a time, my mother made me promise to never go with a stranger who promises candy or ice cream. Well, it turns out you can be hungry enough even to break promises to your mother. Jisang and I set off. We've gone far away from the center of the city, we're now in a poor area. Jisang clothes aren't very burgoyish-ish. But they aren't quite poor either. However, from the way he effortlessly navigates the poor's back street, I guess he must be from around here. Our streets are like a huge maze. But if he is a proletarian, how does he have mana? He's part of the batat. Here we are. We stop in front of a small wooden house at the corner of an intersection. A wide range of dishes is arranged in a cupboard, visible from outside through a glass window. The foods look alien. Well, let's go in. Yeah. Is he Indian? <laughs> yeah, actually, now that I think about it, he sh I should have guessed that from the beginning. Kind of Middle Eastern Indianish. I don't see any other customers. Most likely because it's not. It's now past lunch time, but not yet time for dinner. Hey, Pops! Jisang calls to an older man who I assume to be the owner. The old man's skin is also dark like Jisang's. They must. I come from the same country, though they don't look similar enough to be family. Hey, Jisang, aren't you a little too old to be picking up girls? Oh my god, that accent. Why did I give him that accent? Oh god, I feel bad. But I am proud Indian, so I have a, I have a free card. I can do this. I'm not racist. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. What are you shit talking about? I'm turning 17 this year. Ah. There is only one long table with two around it. Jisang and I sit at the table. What do you want to eat? Uh, what does he have? I tried peeking at the dishes in the cupboard, but none of them look familiar. Well, why don't you just leave that to me? Jisang gets out, walks over to the cupboard, and talks to the old man while pointing out at some dishes. He turns to the table. Uh, a short time later, the old man comes with two plates of white rice and a pot of something. I think that's curry of some sort. And just rice. Pretty good actually. Oh, what is this? It's some kind of creamy green soup. With toppings that give the impression of rubbish floating in sewer water. Sadly, I don't feel so hungry. It's green. Are you sure this is edible? It's vegetables in coconut milk soup. Ah, I think I, I need help. Coconut milk soup, but I hate vegetables. Blah. There is a variety of vegetables in there. Young jackfruit, eggplant. Chayot, Malingo, Malinjo, Long Beans. Quite a lot of these are actual, like, human fruit. They don't try and make up their dish, like, um, sun fruit, moon drop, what, moon drop leaves, or something like that. And then I'll be like, what is that? It also has tofu and tempeh. Oh, tempeh. We call this Chayo Lode. Is this an actual dish? Indian dish? I don't know. I don't think I've eaten this. But I had coconut milk soup before. I don't even know what half of those ingredients are. And did you hear jackfruit? How's that a vegetable? Yeah. <laughs> and look at her eyes, I just noticed. The old man comes with another plate of something. Um, I can't tell why it's this one picture. Again, I have no idea what food it is. It looks as if the chef just put in whatever he could find in his kitchen and drowned it in all in and drowned it all in uh brown light and fluffy mostly liquid but mostly liquid substance. Why is it brown? Hey, just because it's brown doesn't mean it's bad. It's just have some ketchup in it. That's not me how it is. It's... 
Oh my gosh, this looks gross. <laughs> you didn't have to hear it twice. It looks like... That's just peanut sauce. Oh, peanut sauce. Stop making that face, ha ha ha. This is a kind of salad that called gado gado. It's a mixture of vegetables such as potatoes, string beans, bean sprouts, spinach, corn, cabbage, tofu, tempeh, hot boiled eggs, and we mix them in peanut sauce dressing. The old man comes again, this time with a plate of some kind of creature. I can't tell what that is. There is a creature I've never seen before lying on the plate. It's dead, but it looks like it's just sleeping. It hasn't been prepared at all. What is... What was this? It's a catfish. Oh, really? Deep fried. This food is still... The food itself is called Pesel Lele. A catfish? Yes, catfish are not only delicious as food, but also cheap because they are easy to farm. This is absolutely the ugliest fish I've ever seen. Actually, catfish are quite delicious. Now let's dig in. Ha ha ha. Uh, uh, okay. These foods look horrifying, but I'm even hung- But I'm very hungry right now. Here goes nothing. You're gonna enjoy it. I bet, I guess. It's- It's delicious. This is really good. Ah, 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 ah. Enjoy your meal, young, young lady. I can't believe it. I don't know if it's only because of my hunger, but I genuinely think that I've never tasted anything as tasty as what I'm eating right now. Now I'm actually getting the craving for Indian food. I want to just go down to the, some restaurant and just order some curry and rice. Oh. <laughs> Other than the catfish, the food is just vegetables, but it's very rich in taste. I think it was prepared and cooked with a lot of different species, spices. In under 15 minutes, Jihyang and I have devoured everything on the table. Phew, so how was it? It's delicious. Were they the traditional foods of your country? Very observant of you, Lady Elise. And what country is that? Hehehe, <laughs> Lady Elise. Elise, what date is it today? Um, Sunday 27th of Sextil is 3.13, why? To be more accurate, this year is AM 3.13. Why is AM? But it has always been AM ever since I was born, in AM 298. Why is AM anyway? And why can't we just stop saying it? Oh, you can stop saying it. Many people have. I just wanted to bring it up because it has a lot to do with my country. First, why don't we talk about today's date? It's Sunday 27, such still is AM 313, right? After something, maybe? Sunday is Sun's Day, named after the bright thing in the sky. Such still is literally means the six. Oh. Though in this case, the sixth month. All months are named similarly. Primalis names the first month. October means eighth month. December means tenth month. Undecember means eleventh month. And so on. Okay, so some of the names are similar, are the same, but not all. Alright, now they actually explain the date system for once. Oh, I've always thought that October sounds similar to octopus. Must be because they are both related to the number eight. Ha ha ha. Your assumption is correct. Octo means 8. Anyway, what's really interesting is the year. AM is short for Anno Magi. Magi? Magi? I don't know. It means in the year of magic. Oh. Magi. Maybe that's how you pronounce it. The year of magic. Therefore, when you say Sunday 27 Sextil is AM 313, what you're really saying, it's a day of the sun, the 27th day of the 6th month. In the 313 year of magic. Why is it called the year of magic? Because AM is the year in which Overture discovered magic. Wow, but what does all this have to do with your country? Hehehe. <laughs> I was just about to come to that. Do you know what Tamulawa is? Um, I don't think I do. <laughs> Actually, you do, but you call it something else. Oh, yeah, it's the blue mana potion. This vial contains the extract of Tamulawa. That, that's a mana potion. That's right, Tamulawa is what a mana potion is called in its native land. My homeland, thousands of miles away in the east. It's an archipelago called Divipantara. Divipantara. Ah, uh, whatever. I tried. Divipantara. Sounds thousands of miles away. That's really far. I've heard that mana potions are imported from a land in the far east. 
But I never knew how far it is exactly. And you came to Overture from this land? Hmm, actually, it's actually more accurate to say I was brought here. I was brought here almost 20 years ago in order to work as a slave, but 10 years ago I escaped from my master and have been living among the pools ever since. Oh, if he was brought here to become a slave, that must mean that Jixiang's homeland is an Overturian colony. So, um, when he said that AM1 is the year when Overture discovered magic, that's when traders from Overture found Tamulawa in the Vipantra. I see, since my potions come from your land, your people must be really good with magic. Yes, and no. Huh, what do you mean? It's true that thanks to Tamulawa, our people have been able to use magic for thousands of years, compared to Overture that only discovered mana and magic 313 years, 313 years ago after sailing to our land, colonizing it and taking our mana potions. The best magicians from the Vipanchara can cast really powerful magic spells, whose magic formula aren't even known to Overturian majors. On the other hand, magic was only studied scientifically after Overturian scientists created the method for doing so. As a result, Overturian ma majors are able to cast magic spells more efficiently and reliably. Has you ever crossed your mind that the phrase magical science is an oxymoron? What moron? Ah uh ah, -uh. I mean the phrase is magical, the main magical sign contradicts itself. Yeah, kind of is. Um, magic by definition is unscientific. Magic by definition can't be understood. It's only magic because it's magical. Yeah, if you want me to go completely scientific and realistic here. Magic, yes, is unscientific and can't be understood. That's because it doesn't exist. Literally. But if it does exist, which in this world it supposedly it does, then there has to be some kind of scientific scientific explanation. Every phenomenon has a scientific explanation, whether it's some kind of invisible wave that we can't see or um there is a scientific explanation, which is why infrared is not magic. Or cell phones aren't magic. I mean everything has a phenomenon of some sort. Um yeah. How could this be sci scientific? How can science be magical? Ah, I see. The term still exists, nevertheless. Because at one time, magic was magic worse magical. Before it was studied by Overturian scientists, magic was an inexplicable phenomenon. Nobody understood it, it was rightly called magic. I see, so it only became science after mana was brought to Overture 300 years ago. Yes. Moreover, a practical application of magical science emerged 30 years ago in Overture with the invention of magic machines, at the same time giving birth to a new academic dis discipline called magical engineering. Now we're learning even another exposition, but I guess it's fine. I'm pretty much understand a lot of this world now. Oh, hey ji Xiang, you said that magicians from your homeland can cast magic spells with unknown formulas, right? Why aren't they known? Because magical scientists can only figure out the formula of magical spells or magic spells that they themselves can cast. Divipantran magic is beyond their abilities. Why don't they get Divipantran magicians to cast the spells to tell them the formulas? Because those magicians don't know the formula either. Huh? Ah ah ah, why is it strange? Divipantran magicians were already using magic long before magical science existed. The way my people think about magic is entirely different. Wow, this is really interesting. I want to hear more about Divipantra. Ah, 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 there are indeed many more things to tell you about my homeland. One day I will surely tell you all about it. A tale of the land from which magic comes. But it has to be a story for another time. Hmm? It felt like Jixiang was just saying that to me. Strange. Oh, okay. We leave after paying the old man. As Jixiang has promised, the food was quite cheap. It's already sundown when we're back in the city. Jixiang is still with me, which means he doesn't work on Sundays. I don't know what kind of job he has. Considering that he has mana, he even has an extra mana potion with him. It's getting dark. Are you going home? Huh? Oh yeah. Uh, I still don't want to go back to Mason. Where am I going to go? I have nowhere to go. You couldn't you just tell Madame Bavoir that you really don't want to be and that's your wish? Uh, to be a prostitute? I could stay over at Jude's house, I think, but no, I can't do that. If Jude knew about Mason, she asked me to live with her and then I just become a burden. I guess I'll just have to sleep on the street somewhere. 
Yeah, yeah, it's time I went home, haha. <laughs> Where do you live? I will escort you. Uh, no, you don't have to do that. I don't... Jishang Alish Jabana. Oh wait, that's someone else. I was interrupted by the voice of a woman. Oh, it's that general. And it seems like she's hostile with him. Oh, do they fight? Yeah, he's Libertad, she's the part of the forces, the police forces. Fancy meeting you here, Alish Jabana. Janice Wolf, why is the commander of Dragoon patrolling on the street? Isn't that supposed to be the job of your subordinates? While speaking, Jishang slowly positions himself between me and the woman. Because this commander received a report from a subordinate about a muscular foreigner who was spotted using magic in broad daylight. Incidentally, his description fits a certain high-ranking Libertad member. Knew it! There are no ranking Libertad, Wolf. And yet, I knew it was you all the same, Alice Jabana. Oh god, like, Wolf isn't really a bad guy, and so is Jishang, but they just have different ideals. Ah, uh, why? Why can't we just live a life of happiness and peace and rainbows and unicorns? Um, did I, did I not read her text or what? Yeah, I did. Uh, who is this woman? Why is she, why is she and Jishang talking about? Why is Libertad? Without warming, the woman extends her right arm forward. Summon courage. A huge ball of fire erupts from her hand. It flies right at us. Just as quickly, Jisang nullifies gravity with his right hand to propel himself into the air. Nullify willpower. At the same time, his left hand is causing heavy wind to fall on the ball of fire that is now zooming toward me. What? She shoots at her too? The fire is extinguished in an instant. This is the first time I've seen someone cast two magic spells at the same time. Farewell, Commander Wolf. Are you really gonna leave at least there? Now high in the air, Jisang casts a, wind, a wind spell that carries him far away. Soon I can no longer see him. In the span of just a few seconds, Jisang cast three different magic spells using three different magical traits. Earlier today, he healed me with a spell based on yet another magi different magical trait. That makes four in total. <laughs> Hey, huh, he left you here. The woman stares at me with a piercing gaze. Now, must I summon the shit out of your ass or will you come quietly to the police station like a good little bitch? Oh, yeah, a bit. Alright. My gosh, this woman is vulgar. Wait, I only met Ji Xiang today. I don't really know him. Don't lie to me. A thick magical awe starts slowly emanating, emanating from her. She was able to shoot a fireball so effortlessly before. So the only reason she's emitting magical ore now is to give me a warning. She's telling me that she could easily kill me if she wanted to. What's a girl like you doing in Libertad? What? I don't... I don't even know what Libertad is! Bullshit. Her ore is getting stronger. She starts accumulating courage in her right hand and willpower in her left. You know, if for living in a poor area, you sh I think you would be more aware of what Libertad is since that's where they mainly operate, right? And where there are bases. You kind of heard of them? She won't listen to me. I won't be able to win against her. That leaves me running away as my only option. Unfortunately, I can only use fire magic and healing magic, neither of which will help me escape. At least, I hear a shot from behind me. I somehow I knew it was friends. At least, I came here. Yeah, I'm I'm, in, I'm friends now. I came here after feeling an unusually strong magical aura. I'm shocked to find Elise facing off against a police woman. I've been looking for her everywhere. And here she is. What's she doing? How is she... How did she get in trouble with the police? Normally I would stay away from Deja, but I can't let anything happen to Elise. She's the key to my graduation. I rush to her side. Uh, officer! The police woman eyes me, keeping a focus on Elise. Officer, that must have been a misunderstanding. Please stop. A conservatoire student? What's your relationship with this libertine? Libertin? Did she say Libertin? What? You're wrong. This girl is not Libertin. She is... She's my sister. <laughs> what? <laughs> huh? <laughs> oh wow, this is gonna create a huge misunderstanding. It's gonna be like, the next time she's oh yeah, she's your sister, right? And you'll be like, um, uh, yeah. And then Frederick will be like, what? Why didn't you tell me this before? <laughs> yeah. Oh crap, my sister? 
Really? She's not going to buy that? We, why would the sister of a conjurator student be wearing a factory uniform? And they look nothing alike. But this is where we will end it. So leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And follow me on Twitter at DMindGaming if you have enjoyed. And I hope to see you again in the next episode.